Back around 1999, Jay Prince was the focal point of a DEA investigation into the allegation that he was running a multi-state coke ring. The investigation was headed by DEA agent Chad Scott and Jack Schumacher. And at the time, and ever since then, Jay Prince and his team have been adamant that it was a witch hunt and that Prince was being illegally targeted. Scarface even made several songs that name-checked the agents in an unflattering manner. But rap boss Jay Prince was never charged. In 2000, the Dallas Morning News reported that Prince wrote a letter to Congress the prior year in 99 claiming the DEA was harassing him and hurting his business. The rap probe was then shut down after Representative Maxine Waters of California intervened on Prince's behalf with the U.S. Attorney General Janet Reno. The Republicans were upset, as you can imagine, about a black congresswoman intervening in a DEA probe, and they called their own congressional hearings into the DEA investigation of rap Records. Perhaps I will go more into that in another episode. But I will tell you that the special agent in charge of the Houston DEA testified how difficult it was to, quote, infiltrate the Fifth Ward, and that investigation made no progress from 92 to 97 until the government began to have success in its efforts to recruit informants in the Fifth Ward and inside of rap itself. Watching my mother uh, work hard, you know, as a waitress and bring me her tips, and, you know, with us living in the projects at the time, you know, her only wish was to have a home. We put the spotlight on these so-called gangster DEA agents years ago because of their threats on my life and many other criminal acts they committed, Jay Prince wrote back in a 2018 Instagram post. So, back in 99, Jay Prince was never charged with any crimes, but, quote, nearly a dozen rap associates were. Now that's one of those sentences written in a newspaper article that you have to think twice about. What exactly is a rap associate? Not an employee, an associate. Associating with someone doesn't mean anything really. It could mean you shook his hand one time in your whole life at some public event. So it sounds bad and maybe it means Jay Prince dodged a bullet, but it probably means that a bunch of people who knew Jay Prince to some vague degree or had been seeing saying hi to him or standing next to him or took a picture with him were involved in illegal activities. Well, Jay Prince probably crosses paths with tens of thousands of people a year. He's worth a hundred million plus and he's been a Houston icon for 30 years. There's a good chance he didn't have anything at all to do with the dope business. Why would he have? Maybe way back in the day, who knows? But rap has been big since 89-90. And those cases have a five or seven year statute of limitations on them, to my understanding. Now this week, one of the agents Prince said illegally targeted him was convicted for all kinds of corrupt behavior down in New Orleans, where he was stationed after his time in Houston. And he's about to get slammed at sentencing. And he has yet another set of charges still coming, and he's looking at a long time in federal prison, hopefully. Quote, Star DEA agent finds himself at the center of sprawling probe as drug task force comes under scrutiny, read the headline in the New Orleans Advocate when the federal probe first broke three years ago. Agent Scott was described in the story as a legend that extended to the world of drug traffickers where Scott styled himself the White Devil, a ruthless cop who strong-armed informants and boasted to suspects that he was the baddest MF along Interstate 12 corridor. So this week, Chad Scott, the self-styled white devil, was convicted in Louisiana court on seven federal charges, including perjury and obstruction of justice. Prosecutors alleged Scott pressured a man to lie and say he'd witnessed specific drug deals when he had not. Then, Scott allegedly lied on the stand uh, when later questioned about that as part of an effort to win conviction against a suspected H dealer down in Houston. An admitted drug dealer and a local cop uh, have already been convicted in the case and they testified against Scott uh, working the case of the Houston-based trafficker George Peralta. Agent Scott also took 10 grand to push prosecutors to reduce a man's prison sentence, stole money from drug seizures, and falsified records. 
Eventually, he decided he wanted a free Ford F-150, so he had a Houston-based dope dealer purchase one, then seized it as part of an asset forfeiture rather than hand it over to the task force. Court documents say he falsified paperwork about the seizure to say he'd gotten it in Louisiana rather than Texas, and he started driving the truck as his personal vehicle. After they failed to get Jay Prince, agents Schumacher and Scott weren't done. Next, they tried to put Jay Prince as the shot caller behind a murder. The man currently serving 70 years in prison for that crime, Lamar Burks, which occurred during a dice game in the city's Fifth Ward, Jay Prince's home turf, and one of America's oldest black communities, still maintains his innocence from behind bars. Now that Agent Scott has been convicted, Burks is hoping his conviction will be overturned, as Scott played a key role in sending him to prison for such a lengthy time. During Burks' sentencing, Scott and Schumacher testified that Burks was the leader of a Fifth Ward ring connected to the J. Prince non-conspiracy. The state's sole eyewitness at the trial was one Derevin Walker, a multiple felon who was originally charged as the shooter in the case, but just before Burks's trial, the charges against Whitaker were dismissed, and according to court records, the prosecutor in Burks' case said Whitaker had proved his innocence to them, not in front of the court. But Whitaker was in prison at that time for a dope case, and DEA agents Scott and Schumacher were likely involved in getting him to pin the shooting on Burks, who they thought was close to Prince. Presumably, they imagined they were going to use Burks to tell on Jay Prince. Now, why did these two DEA agents involve themselves with a the local homicide? Well, Burks ran his own rap label, Dollar Bill Records, and his family said he was trying to strike a deal with Jay Prince. Quote, Lamar began to hang around with Prince and approach him for contracts for some of his artists, Burke's brother, Don Burke, said. They were eventually going to do business together. Had you heard of Chad Scott and Jack Schumacher prior to your case? Sure. I mean, their names were in the street. You know, you couldn't, you know, especially in the, in the hip-hop community. DEA agent Jack Schumacher was called as a witness by the state, and he testified that Burke's was linked to the DEA's investigation of Rapalot. So just to be clear, these DEA agents who had nothing to do with the investigation of Burke's murder case itself, officially they show up at a sentencing to make sure he gets as much time as possible. Schumacher took the stand and said multiple informants told him that Burke's and Prince hung out together. He said Burks was known to drive vehicles owned by Prince, who owned a car lot at the time and was into exotic cars. Um, and he said informants told him that the two men had been seen together around Houston and in Atlanta. Schumacher also said one of the informants told him that Jay Prince was going to have Lamar Burks kill him, the DEA agent. So Lamar Burks, whatever he was into, was just seen hanging out with Jay Prince. Wow, if that makes you part of a RICO case, it's pretty frightening. The other witness against Burks claims Agent Scott threatened to take his life if he didn't get on a stand and say Burks was the trigger man instead of Derevin Walker, who they were protecting. Lamar Burks even had an alibi for the night in 97 when the man was gunned down in the Fifth Ward parking lot. He was at his sister's wedding in Louisiana, and there's even a photograph. So, former DEA agent Chad the White Devil Scott headed to federal prison probably for a long time. I think DEA agent Jack Shoemaker is lying long in the churchyard, and meanwhile, Jay Prince and Rapalock Records keeps rolling along. In part two, I'm gonna go more into the long-running DEA investigation into Jay Prince and the congressional hearings that were called that alleged Prince paid Al Gore, who was running for president at the time, to stop the investigation. Mob ties, American dope.